No! <sighs> Once again, it was a cold night. And that is because my diesel here, which is as old as the van, has become old and decrepit and decides when it does and when it doesn't want to work. So the diesel here, located in here, is going. It's the final straw. You're done. Now some of you from the title may be thinking that my decision's a little extreme, going from a unit that was 1200 quid new to something that was 77 quid. Well I'm going to go into detail about why I'm doing this in a bit, but first, let's see the replacement. And here it is. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar by now with what that is. Um, it's not too dissimilar to what I've just shown you in my cupboard. Um, this is basically a replica of an Herbus Basher, all the Chinese ones are. So in theory, this should just replace the unit that's already in there. The only other thing, technically, I've got to replace is the wiring loom because it should just fit in the exact same hole the heat event will join onto it, the intake will join onto it, the fuel line will join on, the air filter and exhaust uh, on this van because it fits a nervous basher as well. So yeah, essentially I'll just be taking the old unit out and putting this in and putting some wires up to the new controller and uh, that'll be that. It probably won't be that easy. It's never that easy. I'll probably just jinx myself. Also went for an upgraded remote because it comes with a little remote control that's more advanced than just the standard on off one that you get um, with with the diesel here um, but that is a big big reason I've gone for this because on my van um, there is no display there is no control over it it's just on and then you turn it to a number but what's different about mine is because it's an ambulance when you look in the back of the controller there um, it's ambulance wiring all the wiring in my van is yellow and it's got codes and it's job written on it. And that has been tapped directly into the Herbus Basher wiring. There's not any Herbus Basher wiring for it. And I think what they've done to prolong the time before it needs servicing and to stop it coking up is they've took away the ability to control the temperature. It's on and it's on hot all of the time. Like I said, that could be an ambulance thing. That could be that the, the thermistor or the thermostat, whatever it's called in there is gone. It could be an error code that I don't know because I haven't got a screen to read it. It could be a multitude of problems. The other issue other than the temperature is um, it doesn't like to fire up in the cold when you need it most. Um, it will go for its first cycle. For some reason, it always does two cycles when it fires up. So it tries, you hear the pump go in, it stops. And then it tries again and then it will go. But when it's really cold, it'll just, it tries and then you just hear it go, Ugh. and that is most often when it's cold weather. Or if you turn it off and then try and turn it back on again within, I'd say two hours. So either if it's too warm or too cold, it don't like it. It's got to be just right. And I, no, that's not how I operate. I want it just to be able to push a button and it be on. And now, as an added bonus, I can be anywhere in the van. I can be in bed and I can put it on. I am so excited about this. It's, oh. Every morning you don't know the pain of waking up in a van. In the winter, the fire's gone out in the night and it is Baltic in here. And you have to get up in your pants to go and turn that poxy little turny thing for it to then do its cycle, fail, do its cycle. Nah, it's too cold, sorry. I'm done. But the reason I've gone for a complete replacement of a Chinese one as opposed to say just servicing it because trust me I can hear already a number of you screaming about that um, it's just not cost effective anymore it's been running as long as the van has God knows how much abuse it's been put through it's the uh, I believe the original Air D2 Air Top D2 I, I can't remember with Urbis Basher I'm really not even that interested about it however what I do know is this to buy the service kit for it or send it away to get serviced as Herbus Spasher recommend is over £120 I believe. So more expensive than this entire kit. To get a new controller with a screen on it so I can see what it's doing and maybe even um, rule out the, the temperature issue is as much as getting one of these. It's uh, £68, this was £77. So. Whichever way you look at it, to get the Herbus Spasher up and running again for however long before it goes wrong again because it's old 
it's just not financially feasible anymore. And with these, having fitted quite a lot of them and, and seen them in action, um, the, the, the reliability difference is, is next to none, really. The only issue with these, and I was just about to pull it out, but they've already fixed it. So they used to supply it with a uh, green, quite rubbery fuel line. And that stuff is not actually fuel line. Um, you probably don't want to be putting diesel through it too long. Uh, they've now alleviated that. That's now proper plastic uh, fuel line. So there's a problem already fixed. Now everything else in the uh, the kit, it's the uh, fuel pickup, fuel pump. Technically, I'm not going to need any of it because I've already got everything there set up. The heater currently is ran off the vehicle's tank, and that's how it came. What I'm thinking of doing, I don't actually have the crossover valve yet, or I haven't figured out how I want to do it. I think what I might do is fit the um, auxiliary tank, or get one that fits in the in the cabinet a bit better. What I want to do is fit a changeover valve just before the fuel pump. So, say this is going to the vehicle's tank, I want to tee that off and then I can change whether it comes from the vehicle's tank or an auxiliary tank. Meaning I can use things like kerosene, red diesel, or if I'm just in a situation where I, <coughs> for f sake, I've got an incense candle going, I can't breathe. <laughs> Who ever thought talcum powder would be a good idea? Just so if I get to a point where I really need to preserve the van's fuel or I've had it before where um, the vehicle comes down to a quarter tank and that is the cutoff point for the diesel here. So anything below a quarter tank on this van, um, this won't run. So in that situation, it'd be nice to just turn a little valve and have some backup fuel. So yeah, that is my reasoning. Um, basically no solution that would get the um, Urbispasher running properly is cost effective enough to not Put a Chinese replacement in and finally if you need to get one of these of your own um, you just go on eBay and buy them this isn't a promotional video I just bought this because I'm cold all right let's get at it oh yeah another little job I've been on lately making sure nothing gets hit <laughs> so the doors came with strips on originally but the Sun got to them and they went a bit pink so I started replacing them. And then I got a bit carried away. I just don't want anyone to drive into my doors. Or step. Or jerry can. But I just like things that glow. Right then. Tidy this up. Pipe work from that. Another job. Mole hills. Right, where the power's coming in at. Disconnect it. Well, that's going to come in handy. That's my main feed in. Need that. The rest of that is hmm, kind of redundant now, to be honest. I'll leave that alone for now. I'm going to start bothering it up. thing I'm seeing and there is the amount of sh** that's in it. That's gross. Yes. Wonderful. Another molehill. Right, so as you can see here, ignore the diesel mark. Um, Total transparency. I've just done all this already, but the camera corrupted the file. <laughs> so here I am again. It's basically the same layout as the uh, Chinese one. So they might need a bit of fettling on the holes, but in theory, it should just all click in in the same places. And then we've got the exhaust, got the air intake, got the fuel line. And then if we look, uh, where is it? If we look over there, that is the. Uh, Urba Spasher fuel pump and that's got the exact same plug on it as the Chinese one so I can plug my Chinese one into that without having to like swap the pump or whatever because that is a really quiet pump so I'm going to keep hold of that one 
Right, let's disconnect the diesel eater again. Yeah, when I nicked the exhaust in Portugal for the generator, um, I actually bought another one because it was a bit sharp on the end and it didn't quite fit the uh, the back box. So I was like, oh, I'll just buy a new one. So I actually recently just bought this and uh, <laughs> and now it's kind of pointless because I already got one in the kit. I mean, only what, like a tenner, but I said tenner, I could have saved in it. Let's just take that out of there. The uh, metal clip is corroded on, so I'm just... He stood out. Oh, and again. Okay. But which then? Oh yeah, see that damage there? Can you guess how that happened? <laughs> yeah, I burnt my door. I'll try and get some fiberglass and uh, remake this now should be there we go dear there's a fair bit of corrosion there there is also some burn in there that's not right is it that's not right at all let's see what's caused that shall we yeah now having seen that that's concerning the plastic on this is so brittle now it's just, it's not really a, a one anymore. Is that the one there? Turn that off. There you are. How the f did you get this off? Nope, yeah, look. Oh dear. Yeah, the casing is just completely disintegrating. Crap is falling out all over the place. <laughs> and there you go. The heat sink has actually started touching the plastic and has melted it away. It had a new glow plug um, that sorted out the first issue I had with it. But yeah, having seen that, um, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad I've made this move. To be honest, I think this is about done. So I was wrong. It's not a D2. It's a D4. And uh, yeah, built second of the third 04. Okay, now we've got them side by side, and you can see just how similar they are. You got the intake, fuel, exhaust, intake, fuel, exhaust. But you're right, the locators, obviously they come out as I unscrewed it, but the locators are all the same. Even where the stickers go is the same. So yeah, you can you can definitely see where they got their uh, <laughs> their inspiration. It's like they're just the same. They really are, even when you take them apart should just fit in the same holes yeah as the original there we go um it's got the grubby hands all over it but let's check that yeah so we got the new one there's the fuel line yeah we're all good exactly the same let's see if we've got any better one than these are supplied probably not no they're just as cheap and sh back on looking over at the fuel pump is uh, there's no filter there's no fuel filter on it and uh, that's obviously not ideal <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing on 
on, on, on. Wonderful. God, it's all very tight in here. Now the big question is, does that fit and is that still suitable? It is full to the brim of crap. So I'm gonna say no, that needs replacing. But replacing that, however, is gonna be easier said than done because it's in there. Excuse the state of the cupboards. Lance come in after his uh, dog walk the other day and got the place completely shitted up. And that looks pop riveted on actually. I don't know how I'm gonna get that vent off. I knew I shouldn't have said it's gonna be easy. Hello. You come to help with the diesel here, have you? Eh? Oh, bloody. This isn't really. You're never this fussy in the day. What's up here? Eh? You got a problem with this camera? Have you? Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buddy boy. Where's your ball? Go find your ball. I'm knocking everything over. There it is. Okay, ready? There he goes. Okay, first problem. Um, they've made this bit wider than that. So not only does that not fit, neither does the, even the stuff supplied. <laughs> All this is now basically useless. It's another problem I had when I first bought the van. That corroded, so all of this loom needed repairing and reconnecting to stuff because it was all just done. Even on here, just now, that's just corroded off. I don't even know what that is, that's an earth somewhere what it's for however rather than having to feed uh, that all the way up the van what I'm going to do now is check the codes on the uh, ambulance wiring and if these match what's coming off the control unit in the van um, what we'll be able to do is tap the three wires of the controller onto three of these essentially sending it straight up to where I need it to go and then connect that end back on to the corresponding uh, codes and away we go so there's the fuel pump so that can be attached to there right yeah so we've got here UW NR and SP now they all say the same in the controller so I can use heater WM for say green heater NR for red and SP for green right that is the new wiring wired into the old wiring put a better connection on there in a minute but um, that'll do for now but I've still got the controller down here and before I send it up into there um, I'm gonna get that pipe connected I'm gonna plug the remote in and in theory I should be able to fire it up there we go on top of a spaghetti So I've just wired up the three controller wires with the corresponding wires that I can find in here. Now I'm just gonna rig them up temporary to make sure that the controller comes on. I don't wanna make all the ends and then it not actually work. So this cable is absolutely wank. Power it back on and see if that works. Oops. Okay. It's got nothing reading on it. I don't know what that means. I'm a dozy. I put the green back on the wrong bloody wire. Okay, so that's all connected up now from tapping into the ambulance wiring. That's going down. 
into the diesel heater. The diesel heater is now basically ready. Whoever's chainsawing out there needs to stop. This is the original. I haven't um, wired the new one in yet, but uh, we're gonna, gonna have to give it a go. But before I do that, let's not burn the door again, shall we? I wonder if it works for my ear. <gasps> it does! Does the pump start ticking? Yeah, there it goes. We have lift off. And there we bloody go. Done! Ish. Leave that on for a bit, see how we get on. Well, old friend, you've served your purpose. Sort of. You are spares and repairs for somebody else. Bag of many spares. Um, we're done. Okay, having a slight issue with the original controller because it's actually it's a newer firmware than what I've ever seen. I plugged the, the new one in that I was going to do with the upgraded remote and it doesn't even acknowledge it so that's pretty annoying but it's, it all still works it just means I have to send this back which I have to anyway because it's damaged but that is the heat working I'm going to plug this all in now and then that's it done. Lovely. Just sold on eBay, spares and repairs for £92, which is £15 more than I paid for the new one. Oh, wow. There we go. Old diesel here out, new one in, working a lot better. Um, hasn't got a 100% to plan, like the uh, controller issue. But to be honest, that controller I got sent was damaged anyway. Um, so I'm just going to send that back, I think. I know now it isn't compatible, so... Yeah, now I've got a diesel heater that I can actually control the settings off. And uh, know that I can just press on and off and it will do what it needs to do. So I'm happy. I hope this has been of some help or interest at least. Like I said, this isn't a how-to video. I don't do those. Um, it's just me getting on with my thing and taking you along for the ride. But yeah, now I'm going to sit back, let the diesel heater do its thing, take these off and uh, have a chill out. So the diesel heater has been in for two months and I am wearing exactly the same clothes as I was two months ago. Whoops. And it has not missed a single beat. Um, it's not got smoky, it's not made any weird noises yet, um, it hasn't had any starting issues, it's just worked and it's been amazing. Obviously with any diesel heater you have a risk of uh, coking them up so I'm quite conscious about running it on full power every now and again just to burn any build up off. Um, and yeah, I've had no issues at all. There was one thing I didn't record at the time um, because I had to order a new pipe and it come like two days later and I forgot to record it, um, is yeah, the intake pipe. And the reason that intake pipe was important to fit is because it's in an outside locker. Um, when you look at the, like the locker, it's here and the exhaust pipe is directly underneath it. When the diesel heater was running, you could feel a bit of a, like a vacuum on the door. Uh, so that meant there was a pretty high risk of it sucking in its own exhaust fumes and just pumping them into the van. And I don't need to explain why that's not ideal. So yeah, I bought the right size pipe. It was an absolute farce. I couldn't get that vent out. So what I did was cut the old pipe away, uh, give me a little bit of a lip, something to sort of attach to, clean that up as best as I could, and then fit the new one over it and sort of locked it all together and bonded it and stuff. And then straight onto the diesel heater. So now, once again, the diesel heater is taking air from the van, heating it, and putting it back into the van. So yeah, if you're going to go and fit a diesel heater in an underslung locker like I did, um, it's probably wise to do the same. You don't want to be pumping in diesel fumes into your van. But since then, it was good to go, and it's been running ever since. It's running right now, um, and I love it. I still haven't done the change over tank and the valve and whatnot. Um, I just about as you see in the next up and coming videos, I've been pretty busy. Uh, so that project's just been shelved for now and I will get around to that. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with my decision. I got rid of an expensive unit, but it was old and would very rarely do its job and give me heat. Now I've replaced it with a cheap one. I've got heat on demand and via remote. So yeah, I'm happy. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.